So not so long ago, I added to one of my weekly day in the life type posts that I had done a whole post on an article I had seen about over 50s and about how over 50s were skivers and all this sort of thing. And I'd recorded this post and when I went to upload it, it the my camera phone, as it occasionally does, had corrupted the file. And so I added the links to the articles in my vlog and just said, look, these are my thoughts on it. But I was a lot more concise. I didn't waste any time on it because I couldn't be bothered to re-record the whole post. Well, this morning I've recorded uh, a couple of things and dropped those down into my camera and I, uh, into my laptop. And I went to clear the camera because those had uploaded and that post that was corrupted and I am sure I deleted because it was a corrupted post is now on my camera and it's fine and I've uploaded it and it's all there really weird so I'm going to re-watch it and if it still makes sense and I still want to post it I will attach it to the end of this and I'll have this as a separate post because I think it was about 15 minutes long and um, and then you can tell me what you think about that I will re-include the links to the articles because um, I thought it was really interesting you know we're starting to demonize certain people blaming them for the problems in the country you know it's the young people they're all lazy and no one has any work experience it's the over 50s because they're old and they don't want to work and they're all sick um, it's the fault of the disabled people for having so many benefits and being so ill and it's just this constant merry-go-round of whose fault is it of course, we know whose fault it is. <laughs> it's the government's fault. It's everyone's fault. It's the general downgrade of the human population whereby we have less and less and pe less and less people able to work because we are getting sicker and sicker and living longer and longer, which means um, pensions aren't uh, are having to be stretched a long way because you can potentially be retired for 40 years and gaining a pension a lot of those estate pensions and they keep saying about they're run, running out of money on that one as well and people are getting sicker earlier people are getting sicker because they're not looking after themselves so from your 50s you might be claiming sick payments or be unable to work and then you hit retirement and you're claiming your state pension so you might be on benefits potentially for half your life and we also have a lot of really awful jobs you know there's a lot of complaints about well we've got all these empty jobs no one's filling I'm very suspicious about those numbers um, but the jobs are rubbish the jobs don't pay enough to live on. If you take a full-time job and it doesn't pay enough um, to keep a roof over your head, food on the table and your bills paid, why would you take it? Anyway, so that's all in there as well. Um, enjoy and do rant as a result. I'm sure lots of you have things to say on this. Lots of you will still think that it's the over 50s fault. Um, a lot of you will be the victims of that system and um, the ageism in the workplace, which is another big problem where you know employers complain how young people don't have a good work ethic and don't turn up to work and don't have the skills and then they won't employ the older people because they're old they're over 50 they're old they don't know how to work they get sicker they have commitments you know all that sort of thing it just really sickens and annoys me so have a look and see what you think and do comment speak to you soon I've just been reading an article on, came up one of my news feeds, it's from This Is Money and it's a real clickbait title, it's called Rise of the Midlife Shirkers, Can Labour Succeed Where Jeremy Hunt Failed? The Midlife Shirkers being those people who are over 50 and who don't work. The title is ridiculous because when you look at the numbers there's very few shirkers out there and I don't think they're shirkers at all anyway. What we've got is, so I've pulled out some numbers from this because there's nothing I hate more than 
seeing a headline like that and everyone goes, oh, these blooming over 50s complaining that they can't get jobs, it's all their fault. That's why we've all these got all these jobs they should be taking. So let's have a look at the numbers. The, now, these are the numbers that are then in the article. So having read the title and thought, oh, well, over 50s are all lazy, low, la lazy layabouts, you then look at the numbers. So there are just under... So when you look at the numbers, there are just over 3.5 million economically inactive people between 50 and 64. And when you look at the total in age groups 16 to 64, there are 9.4 million people who are described as economically inactive. Now, economically inactive does not mean they're sitting around on benefits before you start on that one. Because I know that people are sitting there going, oh, they're economically inactive, make them go out to work, they're lazy. Here's how some of the numbers break down. And it doesn't quite add up, but, um, you know, these are the numbers I've got to work with. So 2.8 million of those people are, and this is like across the 9.4 million, 2.8 million are on long-term sick. And that includes people who are on NHS waiting lists, waiting for operations and other forms of treatment to get them back to health. So that's a big problem because the NHS waiting lists are crippling everything, including the people who desperately need the operations and the treatments. 2.6 million are students and a lot of those will be in the younger age brackets but there are plenty of mature students out there. Uh, 1.7 million people are caring for family. Now that can be young children not yet at school. It could be older family members who aren't able to live on their own. So that includes caring for sick relatives, um, basically being a carer. You've got 1 million people who are already retired, so you can leave them alone for a start. Um, you've got 228,000 people described as being on short-term sick, so presumably when they are better they go back to work, so I don't know whether you count them or not. And there are 1 million people who are in that over 50 age bracket who are described as not needing or wanting work. Now, not needing work may well mean that they are self-funded. Maybe they spent their whole working lives putting money away so they could effectively retire early. They might have ISAs, they might have paid off their mortgages and they've got more money every month, they don't need the work anymore. The people who don't want to work, it may be because they don't need to work. And so that's how a lot of those numbers break down. So it's not midlifers are all shirkers. There's a whole range of things going on there, which over 50s are a part of every, all of that. Now, it's a bit confusing because I then read another article from something called the ilcuk.org.uk, and I'll link these articles in the show notes, which said that uh, over one million people in the 50 to 64 age bracket are involuntarily out of work. And I've spoken before about how, you know, there are problems with um, keeping over 50s in jobs. There's a lot of ageism in the workplace. There is a lack of interest in helping older people to either retrain for new careers or to train up in their existing jobs. I mean, I know that um, the business, one of the businesses that I clean for, the, the, the owner of the business, the director, has just hit 60 and has been forced out by the rest of the company because they don't want him there anymore because he's too old apparently. They're all like under 40 and they've pushed him out. He's like a sleeping partner now but he doesn't do any work and he's a bit lost really. I mean, 
how you end up in that situation when you own the business, I don't know. Which is really sad, and I think that happens to an awful lot of people. So there are all sorts of reasons why older people either don't have work, can't find work, or don't want to go back into work. You might have older people who've been stuck in jobs they've hated all their lives. They've just reached the point where they don't need the, the money anymore and they can escape from that horrible workplace that they've hated for so many years. And now you've got Rachel Reeves who's apparently going to be targeting them. So apparently in, her art, in this article from This Is Money, it says that um, Rachel Reeves is likely to be targeting that one million of people over, six, over 50 who are either don't need to work or aren't looking for work. Well, if you don't need to work, why should you be forced back in? If you don't need it, then clearly that's because you have enough money to live on. And I'm assuming that doesn't mean that there are benefits. I'm assuming that's because they have savings, because they've massively, massively reduced their outgoings, uh, because like mortgages are paid off, the kids have left home, all that sort of thing. So there's a huge variety of reasons. And, you know, it. I can imagine, and I read a lot of the comments that come in on here from people saying that they can't get work and there are lots of YouTube channels from over 50s as well who are struggling to find jobs um, because the work, work doesn't want older people that's a lot of the problem and I don't know that's something that you can surmount you can't remove prejudice in that way I don't think and when you've got so many unfilled jobs that you can't get people who are under 50 to take. And then, and I've written about this before as well, I've, I've spoken about this, about how, you know, there's, there's a reason there are all these jobs vacant. And it's mostly because they're really awful jobs, they're really badly paid, they, they, they are not flexible to people's lifestyles, where they may have caring responsibilities, um, all sorts of different things and the world of work just wants to treat people like numbers and doesn't consider people to have lives it's you turn up you go home don't ask for time off don't have family problems don't have issues where you can't come in la di da di da and given how many people are on working from home still I'm amazed that most of this is still a problem because working from home means that you can, you must be able to somehow um, kind of get everything to jigsaw together. But there still seem to be some fairly major problems out there. I mean, the work market is naff. Um, people are treated appallingly. If I could afford to, you know, get rid of my job and, and not have to work, I would do it. I've found another way of doing it. I don't have to deal with the nine to five. I don't have to deal with work colleagues. I don't have a boss. I don't have any of that problem stuff um, because even the work that I do that is for other people, um, I don't really have to deal with people. <laughs> and the hours are fitted in around that so that it kind of minimizes that and it's flexible as well. If I'm going to be away because I'm going down to my parents for two weeks, which I do every three months. I tell them I'm going to be away and they either do without somebody or they can call the agency and ask for someone else to come in. I don't think anyone has ever asked for anyone to come in. Um, so it can't be that big of a problem. Equally with those small jobs, I don't want to rely on them. They're pin money, um, they enable me to not have to dip into savings but if I didn't have them there it wouldn't be a catastrophe and in that way that means that I can never be pushed around I can never be bullied into doing hours that I don't want to do or having to uh, cut holiday 
visits down to my parents because someone says they want me there. Or if you want me there, go and find somebody else to do the job. And that keeps the control at my end because all my other jobs are cont controlled by me anyway. And I think if more people could work like that, it would make work a lot easier. So, I mean, Rachel Reeves is making no friends across the board. She's targeting everybody who can't fight back. And not surprisingly, they're not targeting the people they should be, which are the billionaires and the big corporations, because politicians are scared of the money. And therefore, they will continue to target people who can't fight back or, you know, take their businesses elsewhere. I can't imagine where the rest of this year is going to end up. The October budget will be interesting. And I think it's... Um, I think it's going to be hard going.